Hello and welcome to Dell's Gaming. I'm Dell and this is from the Depths Designer. And in this episode, we're going to be looking at some changes that have been brought into the uh, game recently. And uh, the biggest one um, w at the moment is I am currently running, it came into the branch at 1.861, I'm running at 1.864, but. Um, it is the advanced cannons. Now, I haven't touched these previously, partially because I thought they were still needing a bit of balance, and that they're, they are still a little bit, maybe need a little bit of balancing with the other weapons. Um, but they're in the game, so we might as well have a look at them. Now, this won't be an, an in-depth review on how to use them. This is just gonna be a, a quick build, just to quickly start seeing, I say a quick build, um, a quickish, build to look at some of the the options and see what we can do with them now um the plan as such in this episode is um i've, I've been thinking we're gonna build a new ship because i have been thinking that should i um rebuild the existing ships refit them with some advanced cannons or start again and uh, really, the layout of advanced cannons is different enough on a ship that it doesn't always lend itself to being refitted onto an existing ship. You can do it and fit it in. But it might be worth starting afresh on a ship to ensure you get the best out of um, the weapon system and the advanced turrets. Advanced cannons, sorry. Um, so, what we're going to look at is a little destroyer-sized vessel. Now, a destroyer to me means that it's going to have to be around 1,500 uh, blocks. Now, I'm going to try and keep a bit classical in the uh, design. It's not to be a totally classic uh, look and design, because block-wise, if you try to keep something looking totally like an original destroyer or modern destroyer you'll end up with something which is about 10 20 000 blocks um and in our campaign at the moment to be in the battle where we have a um uh 20 000 block limit so we've got to say 10 000 blocks is our limit so if if a destroyer is to be in with another ship it's got to be significantly lower. So I'm looking around 1,500 blocks. That means you'd have a big ship and maybe a couple of destroyers. You know, um, that is, which is the aim of a destroyer is to support a larger ship. So we're looking at around a 1,500 block um, ship. So we're going to set that as a keel. So now um, we are... Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to think of the weapon systems. And this is going to be... We're against, coming against the Steel Striders. And we've had some problems with their ships. So we're going to try and build a destroyer which... Um, is going to try and go against those. And, and protect our surface ships from um, aircraft to a, to, a, to a great degree and see what we can do on that. So it's going to be like an AA destroyer. Now uh, we'll also put it so it's a sub so it's going to be a you know go against other than surface ships so it's going to basically uh, um, AA primary anti-sub secondary um, and then we'll see how that fits in there. And it, the idea is to get close to an existing ship, um, of um, stay close to it, to give it close range support and weapon fire. So, okay, um, I'm just building up a basic hull here as a starting point for our system. I'm almost we armor it up. It's not going to be heavily armored. Um, we didn't. I'll armor this up a little bit more in some places. So, it's, but it's not armor is not its function. It's not going to be uh, the primary target in most cases. Well, hopefully that's that will be the case. Um, we can't guarantee that, but uh, you know, hopefully it will not be. So, we're going to look at weapon systems first. I just plan 
roughly where things are going to go. I'm just going to put some placeholders in as such. Now what I'm thinking of is um, a, a main dual purpose advanced cannon. Um, now with advanced cannons, um, uh, the dual purpose side of it will be it can be used against surface vessels as well as being able to use this against aircraft. Aircraft is, I wouldn't say primary, but it's going to be about 50-50. We'll then have a, and this is going to have a longish range. Then we'll have a secondary um, system, which is going to be purely designed mainly to go against close range, fast AA, um, AA gun. We'll then have a missile system, I think, which is going to be anti-surface, anti-submarine sort of um, attack pattern. So it's not going to be anti-air, it's going to be surface and um, uh, AA primary. Um, and then we'll just have some you know, missile interceptors and bits and pieces like that, so some anti-missile defences of some description. Right, so main autocannon. So or should we say advanced um, uh, cannons. Currently, it seems like a lot of systems head towards the auto cannon route because it is the overpowered part of the where it needs a bit of balancing. But um, we're going to look at a uh, main gun, which is going to be um, you know, not too large. It's going to be the destroyer size. It's not designed to destroy ships. It's just going to be designed to put um, some damage to a larger ship out there if it comes in. So we're going to have possibly, um, the other choice I'm going to go to is I'm going to have multiple guns. Uh, the choice you've got with the guns, in general, with advanced guns, is make one very big gun which does everything and is really powerful and is uber. Or multiple smaller guns. And I'm going to try and go for the multiple smaller gun approach in this destroyer. Uh, so we have resiliency. So if one gun gets taken out, uh, another gun would be able to take over and continue firing. So, starting this off, when you're starting with advanced cannons, my view is you start with your ammunition. You may have a gun in, a, in, in mind, but it's sometimes better to start with the ammunition. So we're going to start with the ammo controller. Because this is where we define what ammo is being fired in the sh in the ship, and this is the the big difference between the advanced and custom cannons is they actually have a separate ammo component, similar to like the missile system, in that we design our ammo first. So we're going to go and set up a simple shell. Um, so the size of your gun can be dependent upon your ammo complexity. Now, I've set up four blocks here, and if we go into this block, and we can now add parts to the shell to make, make it up. Now, we could just go with a very simple shell, like this here. Now, the beauty of this is you can see the, the various settings down here. We're going to mostly make about a 10 centimeter shell. The good bit here is you can put in what size shell you want and it will tell you items like um, what your reload time will be. So reload time from clip 198. Um, you've got items such as the barrel length you'll need on this gun to be optimal for various reasons and the velocity etc. Now we haven't set everything up, so some of these will be won't be correct. Um, but you can see as I make this gut this more complex. So if I go up to this a four part, you'll notice here the reload time has gone up to three point nine six. Um, the we ignore the barrel length for the moment because that's due to the amount of gunpowder we've got here, um, and the barrel cooled down six seconds. So making a more complex shell actually means that it will reload it will take longer to reload so um you you have a bit of a compromise you need to find between a very complex shell here so here for instance we've now got a 5.6 and a you know a nine second cooldown a, a 
11 seconds to pass the ammo clip. So this is going to make your gun on the top of the ship that much bigger because it is more complex. So um, you've, got, you've got to balance it. You also might need larger shell racks. This has got a shell rack of 2 meters and we haven't even started doing everything. Whereas I want to stick with a 1 meter shell rack. Let's see how what we can go down to. There we go, that's a one meter with four blocks. So, okay, we're going to start with the ammo. So what we can add in is we've got a couple of areas. Now, powder casing is our propellant. And obviously, the more powder you have in there, the more, the faster the velocity will go. But first of all, we need to put on a, a head. Now, we're going to create this first shell as being an anti-air shell. So we're going to look at putting in flak components. Now the flak component basically creates a nice big cloud of fragments and HE in a quite a wide area. So we're going to add that just in here. If we put that flak warhead in here, and in that bo in the bottom area, you'll now see there's an expected flak damage 88 uh, with a radius of nine meters. So we only have to get within the nine meters. Now to go in with that, what we're going to add in is a proximity fuse, which means if it even gets close to the um, target, it will explode. And we also put in a, um, we must be putting a timed fuse, I think. Um, you could put an alti altitude or, or, or timed fuse on this. Now, an altitude fuse means that um, once it gets to a certain altitude above where it is now, it will fire. This, this could be really good if, if planes were flying higher, but at the moment, it's not accurate enough I don't think so we'll go with this and then we just need some other part on the head at the moment just to get the keep the velocity up um, also to get some armor piercing I don't think we need yeah we're mainly working with the the um, flak here so we could just go with double flak so that's a, a nice large 11 meter. Yeah, we're going to go with with this. So it's not going to be highly a velo high velocity, but this is a flak cannon. So yeah, that that's okay. So that's going to be our shell. Now, key points we have to look at on here is um, this tells us what we need from our gun. We need one gauge increaser to get to 10 centimeter. Fine. We need a at least a four meter, but up to 10 meter. 9.6 meter barrel length to ensure we get uh, the full velocity which will be important so you know uh, we need a good barrel length not 10 meter we need shell racks of one meter which is good we're keeping it small um, muscle velocity 268 not very high velocity but that's not our priority at this second We've got a expected reload time of four seconds, which is pretty low, but we're going to have to put some extra cooling down and some extra reloaders to lower that to a slightly faster rate. Um, cool down 4.98, so we don't need some cooling. Recoil force is quite high, um, 16,000, so we need to work on recoil. I've, one thing you'll find with the advanced cans is you really need to work on the recoil. It can be very high in, in that regard. Um, so, okay. So this is going to be purely a flak shell. Um, I, we could change a few bits on it. But uh, that's done the work. Now, at the moment, it's not going to be building any. There's two things. There's a few things we need to do now. First of all, we need to give it some shell parts. Now, shell parts are like, well, the parts of the shell. They are not like an ammo box, but they do convert resources into the various um, components. Now, if we go back into here again, you'll notice it takes seven ammo parts to create one shell. And here, I just put 12 boxes. Each box contains 10 ammo parts. So each time uh, it wants to create a shell, it will take items from these ammo boxes. 
to create the shells. So we're going to create, oops, we're going to give it a couple of rows of these. Now the other part, once it starts creating shells, it's got to be able to feed the shells to the gun. So we use this ammo feeder. Now, so the ammo feeder basically sends, um, and we'll go through this, you attach uh, an input to the output and it basically links the two together so that you're linking which shell we are grabbing. So now I'm going to make this, um, yeah, that's fine, we'll go with that. So um, let's just think, how many guns am I going to get? Um, I'll put another row in actually. Yep, yeah, that should do. For what I have in mind, we'll see how many guns we actually do get in, but that gives us enough inputs, uh, sorry, outputs. Uh, so it won't be pr producing anything yet until we've got something to actually hold these missile, um, these shells. Now, one thing you might want to do is all of these boxes are rather explosive if they get hit. So you really got to armor up this. Uh, section of the ship now. Um, so this becomes a prior priority target and also you know a place you want to defend. So I'm immediately going to uh, armor this section up and also potentially yeah just we just go straight across the top like that so this becomes armored. I might even put some more in here once I'm happy and, and it's finished. Um, so when we're looking at reload times, we've also, the amount of ammo part boxes we need, um, it's gonna depend on how quickly you end up, think you're gonna be firing. Um, I might have to increase this, but I have another little bit I want to do. So first of all, we're gonna look at is I did say I want to make this a dual purpose gun system. Now the way I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to create a second ammo point. Now the other reason for this, there's two reasons, one is this shell is no good against surface vessels. So I've got two choices and this is the good thing about the new advanced cans. I've got, I could either try and make this one shell work really well against surface vessels. That's always a possibility. Or why not I just create a different shell? And you'll think, well, you know, what's the point of that? Because, you know, it's only to use one shell at a time. Well, yes and no. Um, yes, it'll only use one shell, but you can have, like in a, a, a clip in a gun, you could put different alternating or at least different shell parts in to the gun. And that will allow the clip to be a mixed clip. So we can have different parts in the gun uh, sorry different shells in the same gun and it will sort of like as the shells are are entered into the into the barrel it will fire them so sometimes it will fire flak and it will fire these other shells so we're going to create a, a double system and I'm going to make this a little bit of a cheaper shell so it might be fired a little bit quicker so we're going to create a um, basically a, a, an HE shell I think Fairly basic HE shell. Now the good part about this, you'll notice it's got a lot higher muzzle velocity, which means it's gonna be a little bit more accurate. Because uh, I've made it a little shorter, it's gonna have a better reload time. So yeah, these, it's gonna be a little bit, I, I've got, I could actually, if we get that as 271, if I get the velocity about the same, on them so this was 268 the gun won't have to move so much between shots so okay we'll increase this is going to have quite a bit of um the armor piercing has gone down to 7.5 so it's not a great armor piercing shell um but we'll put this against we don't make just make this a nice he shell but also if this he shell hits a airplane it will do some nice damage uh so it will work with the whole um, flak and anti-air as well. So it's not, not really um, a loss as such. Now we'll put again some ammo parts in here.
Now you might want to just, or, or I think some people, you might just want to just create one type of um, shell for your guns and just have it use one type automatically um, each time. I say automatically. Uh, have your your gun, or you could have. We'll, we'll look at how often they load. Like we can have more input for flak than he. And that way, there'll be more of a one particular type of shell in, on board. Um, so it's more likely to fire. So we, we can balance it depending on how we want to proceed. Once we have the basic gun set up. Okay, so that's there. That's two ammo production point so we're now going to create a gun on the front now our deck level is going to be somewhere I'm looking at maybe putting a couple of guns on the front or maybe one front one rear now that we've created these sort of sections um, our deck level let's have a look see where we are um, yeah okay okay we're, we're not we're about right um, We could, I think I'll go up one more. It's better to be a bit higher than not high enough. So let's say this is going to be our deck level. We've got a, 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 a nice little gap there we can use for other things. So we've got 11 width, which is about destroyer-ish. What, what length have we got at the moment? 48, yeah, 50 was what I was aiming at, so that's fine. We'll, I can Once I've narrowed down this front, it'll be around about 55, I think, so um, that should be fine. This area in the centre is going to be our main area of secondary guns. So, let's see what it's going to take to build our next part of the gun. Now... We're going to build the first one, let's say, um, let's possibly have a twin deck level. What if, um, now we can still put a bit of the gun underneath. It doesn't all have to be um, above deck. Uh, similar to the pintle style mounts that we do elsewhere um, just making sure that we get plenty of armor in front of this ammo area and then I want this to be three underneath so that's four and that's the enemy two, so I want a bit of a gap so I can shoot over the top of the other gun. Um, so maybe one more here. Yeah, okay, we, 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 we'll go with that. So, okay, what we're going to do is a new object. And there's something I want to got, which I'll go through in a second. I'll do that in a second. Um, and that is the ammo routers, because we're using turrets. But uh, we'll go through that in a second. Let's go through the other basics of setting up the gun. So, let's see. Now, I'm going to need some... We're just going to use some six-way connectors to get this up to our height for our deck. Now, I've, advanced guns can be a little bigger in some regards um, because they've got quite a few components on the actual turret now. So we've done our weapon. So we've got the advanced firing piece. Now, the firing piece is like the barrel of the gun, uh, the block. It's quite nice graphics. So this is where we're going to attach all of our gun items. I'm going to bring that down one. Well, there, I think. Yeah, that looks about right. So that's just two above the deck level. So that will be fine. Um, now, we have to certain parts connect to different areas. 
Um, now the first parts we're going to add, we're going to build up the basics of the gun. Now the first part you'll want to, want to put on is a mantlet. Now the mantlet defines a lot of the field of fire, how much elevation it gets, etc. This was originally done using the different barrel types. So you'd have an elevation barrel, etc. like that. You now set this up with the various mantlets. So we won't go through all of them, but uh, basically you have some small mantlets which give you a fairly narrow field of view, a big mantlet which gives you a nice um, wide field of view. You also notice this mantlet's also got very good armor. Um, that one's 20, this one's 12, so some of these have got very good armor level. Uh, this is a good all-round um, mantlet for doing good elevation up and down, especially if you think you might have to be shooting downwards, uh, which is, we're looking here mainly at an AA, so I'm going to go with the final one, which is the specifically AA gun, because it, it fires almost directly upwards. 80 degrees up but it's got a very low downward angle so if we would have a problem if we're shooting down at vehicles um, which hopefully we're either going to be with this gun we're either going to be f shooting upwards at aircraft or items on the sea so we're, we're, we'll go with this gun right now barrels we'll do the barrel now we wanted about a 10 meter barrel so we need 10 barrel components. Now, bore excavator, I put one of those on there just because it does reduce um, recoil uh, and cool, your, cool down a little bit. And then we're gonna put eight barrels on. And then we'll put a muzzle brake because it will again reduce recoil a little bit so that's our gun obviously not very big at the moment because we haven't put any um, gauges on there so now we have to fit components now one thing I'll say is as soon as you select this you see that um, all that text comes up which is great except it sometimes goes right in the way of where I want to see where I'm putting parts which is sometimes annoying um, okay now first bit is to, to ensure that things are connected you see if you point at an item which is connected to the barrel it comes up with the text if for whatever reason your item is not connected to the barrel and I must be able to find it it will say not connected I must we won't be able to find somewhere to put this so there you go not connected to firing piece so this six-way connector will not for instance connect to the rear of the um, firing piece you have to connect it to the side top or bottom on each of these sections so that's something to bear in mind with um, this items now the next part we needed to put in is the gauges these are the equivalent to increasing gauge but they also have another function so um, if we go down to our advanced cans um, we have two su sections here we've got gauge cooling and gauge increases now the gauge increase Basically, if I click that, you'll notice the gun's got nice and bigger. And we've gone up to 12. I don't want 12 million, I want 10, but it's increased. If I add a few more, we can see we're getting a nice big gun. Now, I don't want... And you see the shell diameter, that's 29 centimetre, which is bigger than I want. I only want a 10 centimetre. That's what I've aimed at. So what I can do, press Q, and we're going to say desired shell gauge is going to be 10. Now, annoyingly, that the, when you hover over the gauge, it's in in, in meters, and this is in centimeters. So, um, I'm after a 10 centimeter. There we go, 0 .00. See, it shows 0 0.009 in there, but it's 10 centimeters in the other. Maybe they, they could maybe make both, both actually the same sort of value centimeters. It would be easier for people to understand otherwise that will get a bit confusing now some of the other factors in here like um, you've got cooldown seconds and rate of fire recoil we won't know until we've shot one of the shelves we've uh, created let's see I'm just uh, calculating out here uh, right now what we're going to do, we've got to keep this relatively small. Let's see, deck level is going to be just 
here, isn't it? So we're going to have two underneath. Okay. Um, now there is a nice little extra splitter here that we can use. And I use these. These are quite like a Y splitter, similar to the, like you had on. Uh, I'm trying to think actually, and you've got them on the lasers, and it allows you to specifically for the gauges. Sorry, just having a bit of a, a moment getting that to go the right way I wanted to. Um, you can make them go around corners basically using this, which is what I'm doing here to just get what I want out of the system. So I'm using these Y pieces to move this gauge around this side here. Now, why am I doing that? Right now, we've got this cooling unit. Now, the cooling unit is basically. Um, cools the barrel down and cools the gauges down to reduce the cooling time of the shell and thereby increase its firing rate. So I'm putting those gauging cooling in there and I'm not going to add in a few bits, I'm going to get this to fire before I add too much in there just so that we can see what it's made up like. Now let's see, now we've got the I'm just going to fill in something on the hull here because we've got deck level coming in at this height. So that's going to be our deck level. So that keeps it nice there. We can see how much we've got to armour up. Um, now the next stage is loading this gun. So we've got this on here. We'll, we'll see if this is enough. We, as I say, we can't really gauge this as to whether this will be enough until we've actually fired a shot. Um, so let's now give it some shooting. Now, um, ammo loading. A few options. As always, there's always options, options, options. Uh, <laughs> so I'm just thinking of what we need. And setting up the area suitably. Mm, just trying to think if this that's a good... No, I uh, don't like that, don't like that. Let's go for something else. Sorry, I've just got something in my mind. I'm trying to work out possibly a good way to do this and I think this could be it. Although I've got to allow for... Can I put that under... Yes, I can put that underneath. I'll put that underneath there. So... Put the weapon controller under there. Okay, yep. Yep. Okay, um, I'm happy with that. That way we can make this all, this will be our, this is going to be the shell room underneath. So we've got the deck gun, that's going to be all the gun parts, uh, gauges, etc. like that. Um, and then underneath here, we're going to have the ammo room or the shell deck. So advanced cannons, da -da -da -da. auto loaders. So auto loaders are what put shells into the barrel or barrels depending on what you've chosen now uh, we've got one meter gun so we've got choice of two options one is the belt fed auto loader or a simple auto loader um, the difference the belt fed one does reload a lot quicker um, so the gun is reloaded very quickly But it has a problem of that it can only fire once it's uh, when you reload the auto loader. The auto loader can't be firing whilst it's reloading, so you can't be putting new ammo into the clip at the same time as firing. It's a one or the other, but it's got a faster fire rate. So this is good for items which are going to be firing in short bursts. Now I'm thinking our main guns are going to be sort of a more sustained fire rather than short burst. So we're going to use the standard auto loader on this. Um, okay, that's a good starting point. Now, so that's our auto loader. Now, 
Without, at the moment, they have no clips, so you could put an ammo router directly on these and they would start loading the gun. But what we would need is some clips. Now again, we need a one meter clip and we're just going to put one. Now you could you can put multiple clips on each auto loader. So again, this is like your ammo storage in the gun, like ammo boxes were um, in a custom. And these were very much like the auto loader process. Now, the more clips you have, the more storage it will have of ammo before it needs to reload from uh, the main ammo factory. In this case, I think we've um, uh, we just gonna have one clip. Um, we've not got a real, this isn't going to be a massively f fast firing gun, I don't think, in, in the, the big scheme of things. Because uh, I'm, I'm keeping this fairly small, because we now have multiple of these guns, is the aim. Now what I'm now adding in is the ammo input feeder. Now this is what gets the ammo from the factory. So now I need to add one other part on here, and that is an ammo under the ammo controller is the uh, ammo router. Now the ammo router is, uh, what should we call it? It's a, it's a block but that you need for turreted weapons. It basically moves the shells or the, the completed shells onto the turret to then be put into these. So it's like a, a routing component. Uh, it does nothing more. You need one of these on each turret. So I'm putting this at the back here. And then I'll also need to put one on the main ship. Now you can just put one um, on the ship, but I'm gonna put one next to each factory just for resiliency. So if one ammo area gets destroyed, the other one would still be producing um, you know, when that block had got destroyed, basically you'd get no ammo being delivered to any of your guns. So by having two of them, if one gets destroyed, the other one at least will be still working. Um, my understanding, you don't actually have to have this touching. It's it's more between ships than anything else, so it doesn't need to be touching those items, although mine is. It's not a requirement. Now I have to... You'll notice there's still no ammo going in. Now I have to associate each of these inputs with one of the ammo factories. So if I go down here and press Q, you'll see you've got controllers. Now at the moment then there's no names or numbers, but I know that this 16 here is the flak one. So if I select there, I can select one of the outputs. And you can already hear that's just starting to load some ammo. And then we'll have at the top the HE. Now this is going to do a 50 50 at this time. So you can see the low, the, the rounds are starting to be loaded in here. And you'll notice the graphics for the actual ammo are the same as what we had actually in the factory, which is great. Oops, that's the one. Top one was HE, wasn't it? Now again, it would be nice if this on the side here, these controllers had the number or some identification to the controller we had down below. Otherwise, what you've got to do, like I've done to a degree, is I've kept the number of outputs different, um, so I can see which one's which. So I remember the flak had 16 and the other one had lower. Now, by the looks of it, we've already used a fair few here. And that means we're starting to load our gun. And it also means we could fire our gun. But what we're going to need is put an AI controller on here. Just so that I can control the gun and give it a test firing. So, let's have a look. AI local weapon controller. We'll try and get to the right spot. That was a good. That was a good guess. Right. Uh, we'll put a fail safe in there, and we'll need to put a 
wireless receiver. That's not the right way round. That looks better. Now we haven't got an AI, so I'm just going to plonk an AI core here just temporarily down so that we can test fire this weapon. Now I haven't I haven't added any hydraulics to this here because I want to show just quickly show that. So let's just put a transmitter on there just so that we've got some AI. Now I'm just going to give this a value of five so that I can actually fire it, um, and we'll give the turret a value of five as well. And we'll put myself in here. Give myself a chair, a chair, and a fire control computer. Put myself in the kit chair. Now, obviously, this is in a sink. We only want to fire it once. So, if I come off the bill mode, go to number five, and fire, and I'll fire again. So, we can see, yeah, not not a great um, fire rate there. So, we can now go. Now that we've fired a shell. We can go and have a look at what we had here. So we've got a cooldown of 2.7 seconds. Inaccuracy 0.48. So accuracy I'm not too worried about. Uh, this is a flak gun. Uh, it's just got fight in the air, fire in the area. What I'm not happy about is that cooldown. 2.7 seconds between shots. That's no good. So what we're going to add in now is some um, items to help with the recoil and the cooldown. So if we go into hydraulic ab shock absorbers, um, we're going to select a 4 meter unit, we can attach these to the cooldown, the gauge cooldowns, here, and we should be able to get some more in as well, let's just get some one meter these are for want of a better word you could class these as being a shock absorber um, for the cannon or a recoil buffer, depends on what type of terminology you want to use on them, uh, but there's a few little items, uh, you know, they basically reduce the recoil and the cooldown time of the shell so that it will fire quicker, quite simply. So we've put them on just about every component. Okay, that won't work being put there. So, okay, we'll remove that. No. Uh, that one's working, that one's working. You can see which ones are working based upon uh, the value. You know. So they do work on the end. So let's just try putting them um, on the end here as well. Did that? Is that valid? Yes, that's valid. Um, so put lots of them on, some 4 meters and 1 meters, just to cover all the areas I can on here. Uh, and we can see what that will fire like now and see what changes that add. There is one other item I want to add in here as well while we're here. On the gun, if you remember we put a timed fuse. What we would have to do is set the timing of that fuse. Now there's no way in here of setting that, that timing. So what we have to do is add in a laser targeter. And a laser targeter will allow the AI to basically um, predict the fall of shot. Now let's just make sure this is facing the right way around. If I put that, I'm going to put it just on the top here. I'm hoping we can just get it in there. Go on, get in there. There we go. And that allow we can offset it if we wanted to, um, but that basically allows the AI to set the time at which the shell will fire. Um, now we can make it so it always fires them a little early to get 
planes which are heading into us as an example but we'll leave it on that for the moment let's just see with all of these hydraulics let's see what that has changed for our recoil force so what we have to do is fire again we just have to oops can't aim in that direction there we go uh, still pretty bad really not not too bad not as bad as it was but still not ideal uh, but we have we still cooldowns 2.72 um, so let's see what we can do on that now things we can do um, it's the it's the we can add more whoops what did I just take off took something off and I'm not sure what I just took off mm. hate when I do that something went click I'll find out later Right, let's go on here. So now it's cooling. What we can do is add some more cooling on here. There. And possibly at the back as well. And then put some more of these on here. So it's making the gun a little bigger. But, I hope. That's what I was saying about it. You can, you can end up with quite a large gun on, on this. The components do mount up uh, over time. Um, and require you know quite a lot of. Where did that go? Go. I thought I just told you to put go there. No. Um, yeah, I think that was right. Ah, it must have gone there. That one's not connected, so I won't have that one. Okay, so I've added some more cooling components on here. Let's again. So it's made the gun. The, the base level of that gun a lot larger you can see there's quite quite a width to this gun now uh, we do have there is some a couple of options to be able to increase this a bit further so we're just going to have to reduce this cooldown as much as we can without getting any bigger I think otherwise it's a it's going to look gun and I'm going to have a problem armoring up this gun so let's just see what this does Ah, uh, it's a lot better. It's not great, but it's a lot better. Let's go and have a look what that what that uh, ended up giving us. 1.95 better. So now we can where we can go is we can. There is one other area uh, we can go. And if I take that one off there, I can go along this part of the gun. And we can put some more cooling here. So to get a good on a single barreled gun, to get good fire rates, really you need lots of the cooling units. Um, the cooldown is the main bit that um, causes you problem on your fire rates, I'm finding. Um, so getting at that, you know, basically as much as 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 low as possible by having multiple cooling units let's see i can't can anything go yeah can go in there no i can't because i've got one already on the top so i can't but i could put one on the top here right so that's a whole load of cooling units. so it's ended up quite a large gun in the end you know compared to um compared to a custom cannon that's about the size of a custom cannon and i think a custom cannon would be firing faster than this gun does in my view but we'll have a look what this comes out with in a second let's have a look So that's a lot faster. It's not. It's no machine gun, but it's certainly firing a lot faster, which is good. 
There is a few bits you can do. You can add some overclocking. So we can uh, let's see what our value is at the moment. So we're down to 1.18 seconds. So that's going to be our fastest firing we've got is 1.18. So um, all that top reduced it by 0.8 of a second. Okay, I think we'll go with it. Because what I'm going to do is, if this was the only gun on the ship, I wouldn't be happy and I'd want to put a lot more guns. A lot more cooling on this, make this a lot bigger. You can see there's a lot of extras at the back here. Um, let me just get an extra block here so it's not... There's a lot of items on the back here of this uh, gun for what effectively is a fairly small... Although it's 10 centimetre, you know, um, a fairly small cannon. So it's, um, yeah, uh, that's what I'm saying. The custom cameras can actually be smaller at the moment and more effective. But, uh, okay, we're going to go with it. We're going to go with it, see how, how it works uh, against the various targets. And I will put multiple of these on the ship. I'm going to put one back here. Um, so we'll have a second cannon here firing over this cannon. So that's why uh, we've got a height of two here. So this here is slightly higher so it can shoot over the top of this gun. Uh, and I might put one on the rear as well. So there'll be a third one on the rear. Right, now what I want to look at before, before we go any further is... Uh, I'm not going to fill in those other guns. I'm just going to look at the other gun system we're going to create, which is um, become fairly common. And that is the auto cannon style. Uh, we're going to look at creating an auto cannon, I think. This is going to be short range, uh, a short range gun for targets that get a little too close. We're not worried about um, damage so much as just rate of fire. And it's going to be near the center, so somewhere near the back here. That's your fact. I'm just working out. We might just put it above this uh, section here. So it's going to be side facing, one on either side, I think. Uh, and anything gets really close, this will cut in. Now, we're going to create, let's see, we need another ammo point for it. So let's just block in this ammo section for the moment. Okay, so we've created another little ammo factory. And this is going to be basically a very small shell. We're just going to have a three centimeter, actually, there shell. And we're just going to make this really simple. The main bit here is accuracy and rate of fire. So that's all we're worried about here. So we're just going to create a basically a sabo round. Now I'm actually going to reduce that. I think that we can mostly take one off of that. Don't need it that big. Let's just go. Um, so we've got a good loading rate, yeah, that, that size shell. Let's just go Sabo there. That gives us 700. That should be good enough. Good armor piercing, not kinetic, high kinetic damage, but very good reload time, which is what we want here. That's our primary, is to reload ammo as quickly as possible from this uh, particular shell, uh, with this particular... Shell, yeah, shell. Okay, so this will be, as I said, fairly simple. We'll just put a six way on there just for it to be con contained on. Uh, there, we need a three meter AA, uh, sorry, two meter AA, so that it goes up and down as much as possible. Um, we'll sort out the barrel. Uh, let's just see what optimum barrel length it said it needed 2.4 meter. So we don't need the very long barrel, which is cool. So we just quickly set up the barrel with a bore excavator, uh, three barrels, and a muscle brake. Now what we're going to do in here is go in here and set this to be six barrels. So number of barrels is going up to six. 
and our desired size is going to be a three centimeter um, and we're going to give overclocking to maximum so charge overclock so rate of fire maximized um, now at the moment that's only a 0 0.018 so we will need a uh, gauge so we put a gauge increase on the rear of there and we're up to our three centimeter cool uh, recoil we will put a gauge we need some gauge cooling units on here um, again so let me just we'll put we'll put two on for the moment and it's gonna be close to hitting the other one with uh, okay I might have to do it this way let's put the splitter on even for such a small gun, you can see there's a lot going to be happening around the rear of this. So we'll go like here, and then we'll put the gauge cooling unit on here. Excellent. Now we need our loaders. Now what we're going to use on here, six-way clips. Um, no, I need the controls there so that's gonna have to just go like that there we're gonna use the auto a uh, belt fed one so, so let's go back here let's try that again auto loader the belt fed auto loader because the primary here is to get I need to make sure my clips are facing out no come on where's, where's my there we go The main here is to get rate of fire. Now we'll need a clip on each of these. One ammo, one meter clip. Mm, I don't, don't like the design of this. I'm gonna have to, yeah, I think I'll have to rework this. That's, that's not looking too nice. Okay, how could I rework that to look a little nicer? Um, Okay, right, so I've got myself sorted out with a little uh, auto cannon. It's uh, a little bigger than I would like. Such is this use of advanced cannons. Everything ends up being a little bigger than you expect, as I said before. But we'll just see how this fires. So if I take this off here, and I've set it up as number four, we aim at a target. Whoops, let's see if we can get it to aim it's still reloading so this is one of the bad points of it okay we're gonna have to wait until it fully loads all the clips are loaded before it can fire so um, this is the as I said the downside of the belt fed auto cannon system all of these clips have to be loaded up so um, just gotta wait for them to finish loading Okay, so we are now fully loaded. I, um, our shell parts had run out because we had no ammo barrel. So the ammo basically puts ammo parts in which then get converted into shells. So you have to make sure you still have ammo barrels. Right, okay, so now we have a fully loaded auto cannon, And let's see now how this fires. So... Not bad, not bad. Let's just put a 0.1 delay on that. See if that does any better. That's not too bad at all. I'm going with that. So we've got 0.27 cooldown delay. We could overclock that a little bit. And now let's just, let's just bring this out of the water. Allowing for this is going to be a close range weapon we only want this to fire quickly if something gets within say about 500 meters or so i might change the position of it slightly because i want to put a second one in opposite and at the moment i might have to just change either change that block or when they rotate they might hit each up hit each other so let's just see with that cooldown see if that's something yes that works well so you've got a, a bit of firing, and then once it stops firing, you have to wait for it to reload. So 
So it's done a fire in bursts like that. But we um, we can increase that. But that's that's a, just a quick little gun. This is not not the the best get, um, auto cannon. It's just a quick little rough design. Let's just check the reload, etc. So cooldown 0.27 could be better. Recoil's not too bad. Inaccuracy is very good. 0.1 uh, like that. So yeah. All in all, that should rip apart or at least damage small vessels that um, small aircraft that get close. So what I'm going to do now is um, we've spent a lot of time on these cannons. I'm just going to basically build the rest of the ship with these auto cannons. So I'll put the engines in back here, um, some AI in here somewhere. I'm going to put a missile system in the in here as well for anti-submarine and some uh defenses possibly maybe on the back here above the engine um and we'll see what we end up with uh <laughs> once i've completed i'd like to get i'm at least get one more 10 centimeter gun in here i'd like to get a second a third one on the rear if possible um just so it's got some guns on the rear as well and we're not going to have this as a as a massive rate of fire big gun because we're going to go with the basis of having three of them means basically you got three times the rate of fire by having more guns and also if one gets damaged the others would still be perfectly okay and the two auto cannons um i've got to think i could either put one in the center which has a 360 degree or i'm more thinking of two one each side so um that's also a what i'm thinking at this moment they're, they're quite big actually if you look at the size of this compared to our gun here it's it's all very large so but we'll see how how it works works out once i have built this up um we're at 800 blocks already hmm. we'll see once we've, we've completed this i might have to cut down on the number of guns maybe put just this one in the center and then just have one more of these we'll we'll see how it how it looks and how it goes once i've um built it up a little bit better uh, a little bit further so see you in a while hello and welcome back and I've done a fair bit of lot of work on this, actually a, you know, a lot of work on this now. Um, quite a few changes, uh, but basically in the hull. So we've got two guns up the front, and I've actually made them double guns, because the fire power was just not quite enough from the single gun. So basically I added a couple of um, gauge increases, gauges on the back, and in here, uh, you go up to it and press Q, and made it two barrels. So it's two 10 centimeter barrels. We've got our Gatling auto cannon on the back, which is roughly the same. And we have a few missile systems. We've got some, um, this is some anti-missile here, and also at the back. And I decided to go for some anti-air missiles here, uh, just to give that good impact level against air targets because that's its, its primary targets is aircraft um, this is in its like travel mode so it's quite quick um, it's got some hydrofoils on the bottom near the center which when an enemy is far away it puts the it just lifts it up a little bit to get a little bit more speed out of the uh, the vessel so it can get to where it needs to quickly when the enemy then gets close, it will um, settle down again. So uh, that's all in control blocks down here. So we've got, uh, that's the shields, yeah, so when, um, that's just a one to make it, the hydrofoils go up to 45 degrees by default. And then here we've got one, excuse me about this a second, let me just go into this mode, that's, that'll slow it down a little. There we go, I was just a little too fast moving around. Now I've got to find, find my area again, there we go. So then we have one more uh, control block, so if the enemy is less than 1200 meters, basically just a slight little bit of up, uh, 10 degrees, but not too much. We've got some uh, similar ones for the speed of the ship. Um, so uh, 2,000 to 
zero, more than 2,000 away go to high speed, and shields on and off at 2,500. So after that, we have the guns are set at 2,000 range, and the rear auto cannons about 600. So how does it fight? Well, it's okay. It's not brilliant. I've got to say, it's a little bit of a glass cannon. There is so much weight in these advanced cannons. I don't know if that's on purpose. They they seem to weigh the ship down a lot. So I've had to put a lot of alloy and wood just to keep it floating um, in the settled position, which is um, you know mean which is meant it's not quite as strong as I would like. Um, size wise we're up to 3000 blocks which is twice the size I wished for this and again a lot of it is these turrets these these um, advanced turrets take up more blocks it seems with all the components to get a, a reasonable power out of it but okay that's that's the way this goes so it's not quite as powerful as I would expect but it does a reasonable job for what we're aiming at so it hasn't got brilliant armor but enough to survive so let's let's see what it is actually going to be like and it looks like there's a couple of bits actually i have put some um smoke dispensers on here just to um give it a bit of anti-laser for when we end up going against laser armed um troops or ships um, at the moment the steel striders I don't think they have any but um, it's worth just keeping them around just to be on the safe side there was some just missing there for some reason um, okay so let's just give it a bit of a battle test and see how it goes primarily against air targets so if we bring in say like a flea and a spiral which is a couple of small enemy ships so the aim is we can see the shields have come up and I've put some of the shields as colored shields so our cannons are now firing with their flak shells proximity flak shells and you'll see that the ship has actually slowed down a little bit and that's the spiral gone down and the auto cannon just finishes it off if it's close the auto cannon I've got to say is quite cool. I do like the auto cannon. I think it's very effective. And where's that flea? The flea's quite a fast ship, so we'll see that coming in. If they get a good hit, depends which ammo. They've got two ammo. One is very he, and one which is very flak ammo. There we go. So, not too bad. Now, you'll notice the ship did turn out, turn quite a bit on there. Because um, I've had to put some extra gauges in there. It's got more recoil. So, I've used some stabilizers on the bottom. Just to stop it going completely upside down. Right. Let's just go something a little bit bigger. So, um, we'll try... Uh, junkers fairly... We'll try a Spirit because that was one of the ones that gave us a problem and something a little smaller like um, the Lynx so those two as a fast a big and a fast ship just to see how the weapons do on that and this the idea still is this is not the primary ship in the fleet it's to protect a bigger ship I think will have to be the aim of this. That's the Lynx. Very quick ship. Um, one annoying part is that it uh, is quicker than the turrets can turn on occasion. So we've taken a little bit of damage. But uh, once they do catch it, they do a serious amount of damage. Whoa, we're taking a big hits from the spirit there. But the Gatling gun's having a go at it, and 
Also our flak guns are doing, yeah they're hitting that and doing a fair bit of damage. You can see constant hits there, quite, quite good and when it does hit something vulnerable it makes a big mess of it. And then the um, missiles get a chance to uh, go and finish it off hopefully because the missiles are quite heavily armed. I've uh, got quite a few uh, warheads in them, so they do mess things up if the uh, flak cannons can slow them down enough. So, yep. That's doing the job, and we'll have to just give it... Um, the reason for the, the sound of the autocannon is I've actually set some of the reloaders at different timings. So, um, some wait 30 seconds, some wait 60 and 20, 20. It means that on occasion, the very first burst, when it's all re properly loaded, is very quick. Then after that, it will keep firing, but slightly slower. So, it, But rather than going totally without firing, just because it's reloading. Didn't like that idea. Um, okay, so we'll just give it a, a, a little ubiquitous test, because we have to test what it like against a couple of marauders. Because that's the standard for all testing of all ships. Of course, you know, everyone tests against marauders, don't they? Or don't they? So, we'll go and have a look. If I can just come out of here at what is actually being done at the other end. So we have got, one of the, the guns is the flak, and then it's got a APHE um, shell, so it can still do a fair bit of damage against an enemy ship. Oops, has got a bit of a judder there. Sorry for that, a uh, bit of a, uh, hopefully it's nothing to do with what we're running here, but got a nice little j j jutter, jitter, stutter, stutter is the right word. Um, in the graphics. But you can see it's quite happily, it, it has got a reasonable rate and is taking them out. Not, as I say, not as quickly as I would like, but don't forget this isn't a... Um, this is designed against aircraft. And it's doing okay. But more than anything, it's a bit of fun and we can work on it. I can maybe have a look at the um, the guns and just work on them a little bit more. But uh, yeah, they're doing the doing the job. So that is our new advanced turtle destroyer. I'll give it a little bit of a paint job, just to you know keep it um, in line with everything else like that. I like all the smoke from the cooling down um, guns and everything else in there. It's quite cool. So it's not um, harmless, it could be a bit better, but it's not bad. So as always, any comments, leave them below. I'll do some more um, advanced gun ships, I'm going to do some slightly larger ones which are more battleship style uh, or cruiser style and you know have a bit of fun with a few more auto cannons just to see what the limitations are. Um, bits I found is they're very heavy and they're good but in this smaller sort of design they're not great. It's it's it seems to be you either an auto cannon or a massive great gun. Getting something in between seems to be a bit uh, it's not great, it's not easy, but it can be done. Um, but any comments, any ideas, please leave them below. But until next time, keep fighting. Keep looking on the forums for the latest changes, which could well be, um, I think, possibly engine overhaul next. But until next time, have fun. <laughs>